you can absolutely learn to control your emotions. Hi, I'm Katja Cahoon. I'm a psychotherapist and yoga teacher. Viktor Frankl really said it best. He said, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space is our power to choose. And in that choice lies our freedom and our growth. And that's really what it's about when we talk about controlling our emotions. We want to have choice and we want to have freedom in terms of how we respond. And by the way, I'm not a fan of the word control because very often it leads people to think that you have to suppress the emotions, that the emotion is the problem. And that's actually not true. I'd like to introduce you to a better frame that's actually ultimately more empowered and gives you more freedom, introduce you to two ways to manage your emotions and a couple of tools and practices that you can integrate into your life. I like the word befriending better. Why? Because first of all, we can't help our emotional responses. We have emotions for a reason. They show us when something is off, when something needs attention. So it's not the emotion itself. The emotion is there to tell us about something, to, to give us a signal. How we deal with it, how we manage these emotions and how we respond or react, that's really the challenge. And that's what we want to talk about today, because there are two ways to work with your emotions so that you can come back to a calm, empowered, balanced state out of which we can make good choices. And that's really what the Viktor Frankl quote talks about, right? That power to choose, to not be swept away by our emotions, which is why people want to control them, right? They feel angry and bad. They say something that they regret or they feel frightened and, and feel paralyzed and then maybe feel upset that they didn't take action. Befriending really means that we know our emotions are there, They we know they play an important role, and we learn to work with them. And there are two fundamental ways to work with our emotions, top down and bottom up. Top down means that we work with our prefrontal cortex. Our prefrontal cortex is our newest part of the brain, really where decision making happens, where emotion regulation happens, and where all these good choices that we can make or not happen. And that's really where we have all these different thoughts and attitudes and beliefs, including about emotions. Bottom up means we work with our nervous system. So the most basic are fight, flight, freeze, right? Anger, fight, uh, fear, maybe flight, yeah? or freeze. So emotions are experienced in the body. They're not just cognitive constructs. So we want to work both with the, emo with the cognition and with the with the body where the emotion happens. So you already guessed it, when we work top down, we work with our thoughts and our beliefs and the stories we create around emotions, right? So when you have an emotion, you notice perhaps the emotion, you notice the physical signature of it, maybe your stomach hurts or there's tightness or tension or whatever it might be, and you also have thoughts around it. Perhaps you have secondary beliefs about emotions, and those are important to pay attention to, such as, I shouldn't feel this way, I shouldn't be angry, uh, this is bad. So this then again creates more resistance to emotions and more challenges in terms of actually just noticing the emotion and then working with it and taking empowered action. Bottom up means we work with the nervous system, we work somatically with our bodies. Uh, that's the term for it, somatic tools, th somatic therapy, somatic practices. And so meaning this could be as simple as our breathing, down-regulating our breathing. This could be things like grounding and other practices. There is a tool I introduce a lot of my clients to and that I practice myself that really combines all of them. And that's why I love it. And you can kind of use that tool more cognitively and you can use it more somatically and you can combine it really with other approaches that you might already know about or that you like. And here's the thing about controlling or learning to control your emotions. The more you practice the tool on a regular basis, maybe in low risk, low emotion moments, the more you will have access to it 
when the proverbial shit hits the fan, right? When it's really strong. If you've practiced it, you have it in your emotional muscle memory and boom, there it is. So this tool, I have actually spoken about it in other videos because I'm I'm such a big fan of it and it's so simple. It's not necessarily easy, but it's so simple and it's very easy to remember. This is a tool that was popularized by Tara Brock. For more information, check her book, Radical Compassion. So I've added a, an upfront step to it, which is very really a somatic approach. Think about a situation where you had strong emotions or moderately strong emotions and just bring that back. And notice the changes in your body. Now, the memory itself, right? There is a cognitive part to it, maybe a storyline or some beliefs, and there likely is also a somatic, a physical response to that. And the first thing to do really is to breathe. Breathing is our best friend. It's the most direct way to downregulate our nervous system, and we can't practice it enough. Seriously, good breathing is the essence to everything. So good breathing means that perhaps for a moment you ground yourself, you feel yourself present in the room, in the space you're in, and you take a nice deep breath in, but not too forced or deep, and then you exhale out calmly. And there's really only a few things to remember with good breathing. One is make your exhale as long or slightly longer than your inhale. That's downregulating. If you can breathe through your nose, because that's more calming. And really try to breathe into your belly. Kind of you can put a hand on your belly as you're practicing and learning this. So that deeper breathing pattern. And that you can practice anywhere and everywhere. And already that will give you control over your emotions if you prefer that word. The next step is to recognize your emotions. So this tool, RAIN, that Tara Brack popularized, it starts with R, recognize. And that's really a simple labeling approach. What is happening in the moment? In order to work with your emotions, whether you want to control or befriend them or manage them, you have to recognize that they're there. So that means I recognize, I label anger, sadness, frustration. I can label physical sensations like tension. I can label thought processes such as judgment. Why is that important? When we label, when we recognize, we already create some distance. We're no longer completely lost in the experience. We are actually now observing it a little bit, and that's very powerful. Just that step alone is already great, and you can tell it's a cognitive step. The next step is quite counterintuitive. It is actually to allow and accept that the emotion is there. And this goes back to the sense of when we want to control, we often want to push it away, right? We want to push it away, push it down, somehow make it go away. And what we do here in this process is we say, okay, I accept that this is here right now. I allow this to be here right this moment. You can even ask, can I allow this? And if your answer is yes, okay. If the answer is no, that is okay too. Then you just notice that no, that perhaps the resistance or the urge to fight, and you allow that to be there. What happens in our body when we allow? We let go a little bit of the resistance. Why is that important? What we resist persists. The more we fight an emotion or try to suppress it, often it gets stronger, it pops back up. But if we can say to ourselves, okay, I allow this to be here. We actually open ourselves up to the communication function of that emotion. I for investigate. Next step, we look closer into the emotion. Now you're saying probably, well, wait, I want to control my emotion. Why are you talking about getting closer to the emotion? Well, getting closer really means, again, not giving it more power, but befriending it, learning from it, and letting it pass through. All emotions pass. The more we resist it or the narratives we have around it, that's what make, what creates that looping that becomes very, very unpleasant. So in the investigation, we notice where we feel it, back to somatic work. So we really look at, where am I feeling this? What does it feel like? Does it have a texture, a temperature? So we pay attention to where we feel it, what it feels like. And if that is unpleasant, if the emotion is very strong, 
perhaps we work a little bit more cognitively and we ask ourselves, can I be with this a little bit? Can I allow a 10% of it? Can I learn from it? What is this emotion teaching me? Is there an older story attached to it? Now, sometimes when we have stronger emotions, there's actually a whole history to them, sometimes back to childhood, sometimes more recent. Understanding that, again, can give us a little bit of compassion and understanding. So what is this teaching me? What can I learn from this? If the somatic work is okay, you can even see where is it hurting. And the next step really is to ask, what do I need? What does this part of me need, this emotion? And very often we'll get an answer. We'll get insight into our internal processes. And really, this is what managing emotions is all about, learning to read them accurately, to separate the story from what the emotion is communicating. Let's say I feel anger, and there might be a whole backlog of experiences and stories, and there might be a boundary violation in the moment that I need to attend to. So if I can make space for these emotions and learn from them, ask them some questions, so to speak, I can separate that a little and then take action and say, okay, here I need to speak up or I need to be careful when I'm feeling fear or I need to push through my fear, whatever it might be. Asking that step, what do I need? What is this emotion calling for? Really opens up the final step, which is sometimes called nurturing and sometimes called non-personalization, non-identification. So the nurturing part, again, is a little bit more somatic. You might keep a hand or put a hand on where it hurts, and you might visualize giving yourself a hug or whatever it is that you need, comfort, soothing. If you work a little bit more on the non-identification part, it's a bit more cognitive. Here you say to yourself, for example, I am not my emotions. I am feeling this right now. That is true. I am not my emotions. I know this will pass. And really, if you think about it, it is true. Emotions do pass. Really important that non-personalization, this too shall pass. Anything like that, what would you say to a good friend? I find that question really helpful in this step because a good friend would say something friendly and kind to you and you would to them. You wouldn't say to a good friend, don't feel this way, you shouldn't feel this way, this is bad, right? You might say something like, oh, this is really tough, and, you know, have you thought about that, if you're more cognitive or more, you know, solution-oriented, or you might give them a hug. It takes a bit of practice. This is actually, for many people, the toughest one. To recap, okay, controlling our emotions, this is maybe not what you expected, because really it doesn't work. But what we can do is befriend our emotions, manage our emotions, learn from them, and as we go through this, these steps, and sometimes we have to do several rounds, we actually calm the nervous system because we validate, we don't resist, we offer some nurturing or some distance. And out of that state, you can take positive action. And then we are in that freedom to choose that Viktor Frankl talks about making a choice, whether it's internally, how we perceive something, our attitude or externally in terms of the action we take. I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe. I'm posting new videos every week about mindfulness, yoga, meditation, and tools and skills from psychotherapy. Thanks so much.